everybody out there. Um, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. <laughs> and that joke's not going to make sense to anybody out there, because me and my fabulous guests were talking behind the scenes. Would you like to introduce yourself to the masses out there? Hello, uh, my name is Raymond. I am the con-chair of Comic-Con. Uh, pleasure to meet you all. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Our return, you know, some, some of them know you, because this is your third? Almost fourth? It's fourth I, time? I think it's fourth. Fourth, fourth time. Wow. Yeah, you're, you've almost caught up to Little Karibo. Ah, fantastic. You, you can kind of, like, you can kind of, we, we should send you guys, like, a crown for, like, most times on 91.8 The Fan, and you guys just trade it back and forth. That's <laughs> awesome, because he's, like, he's, like, one of my favorite guests. <laughs> Mine, too. Coincidence. Uh, yeah, a long time ago, when, when I first, uh, when Martin, Martin wasn't doing conventions. Um, he was just, like, you know, just Little Karibo online, and I sent him an email, and I told him, this is, like, like oh, it was my second year. It was right after the first, my first con ever that I ever run. And I said, someday my con will be big enough and I'll be able to fly you here from, from Manchester and you, you will be a guest of my con. He's like, yeah, I could do that. <laughs> like, oh, and so the second year of my con, I like, uh, flew over there. And then he said he started doing cons right after that. And I was like, yeah. <laughs> I was, it was great, it was great having, having him at my second year con. He really boosted the numbers and really probably helped put Comic Con on the map, especially had all those little cool little commercials for us when he started. Oh, yeah, I love a lot of those. <laughs> well, no, like the, the one dude who changes his hair color every single time in the Yu-Gi-Oh! Briz. I yes. That one I will always remember. Yes, and then back at that time, he had like this little uh, back and forth with uh, Vic Manana, so he kept making fun of him and used our used our con it's when we were bringing Vic at that time. He's like, Vic Min Minana na na na, or something like that, and that just became... It was, it, Karibo's great. I love Karibo. He's, he's a funny, he's a funny. Mar Martin's the nicest guy. Well, talking about boosted numbers and, and all that jazz, I mean, did you expect Comic-Con to grow so big? Uh, no. Um, well, uh, when, I, when I first started out, uh, I went to a convention um, a de of decent size. Uh, it was actually uh, in Atlanta, uh, Momocon. It was Momocon. It's a fantastic convention. Loved it. And I said, uh, I looked around, and I was like, it was probably the first convention of that size that I've been to. I said, I want one. I want one. I want, I want, I want to go, I want to make one. I, was like, I think so, because I grew up in uh, ballet. And we did uh, arts festivals all throughout um, Huntsville, Panoply, and other things like that. And I was always involved with, uh, you know, big arts festivals and, uh, you know, all the stage work and stuff like that. So I was like, yeah, we, we can put on, I can put on a show. I can put on a big old show. It'd be fun. It'd be great. <laughs> And, oh, uh, so I, I didn't know you actually had some background in that. Yeah. Um, I was a ballet dancer. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's, that's fine. I mean, like, a lot of, you know, con chairs, I feel like they're like, I'm going to pull a con together, and they don't know, like, the first thing about, you know, putting any sort of stage festival thing on at all. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't know anything about running a con. I knew how to put on a show. <laughs> so Close I said, Comic enough. Comic Con. I said I'm gonna run Comic Con like putting on a big show, and that's 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 it worked out pretty well for me. So, well, that stayed true, you know, even throughout the years because you have that uh, overarching story with the mascots. Yes, yes we have we have an o o overarching story. Today is or this year it's gonna be Comic Con's Kosho's Bizarre Adventure, uh, <laughs> season seven. Uh, we call it seasons because they are there is a continuing story. And uh, last year, uh, Shio, one of our first, our very first mascot, lost her heart, uh, Kingdom Hearts style, because <laughs> she was in like Wonderland or something like that. It, it's getting convoluted. We're turning into a Kingdom Hearts like story. <laughs> well, I don't think Square Enix and Disney plan their stuff very well. I think they just kind of got a sequel, and then then we're like, we got to make it work. <laughs> yeah. So now our first con girl is is now evil. So that's kind of fun. It's a little little twist on everything so you know we're gonna have a great year we're gonna have a great time well there are there any any surprises or hints you can give us for the for the upcoming convention or do we have to be there surprises or hints yes. um i mean uh this this year we're going to have uh, a lot of fun little uh, games for that the whole all the, the congoers can be a part of that will affect the ending result of the convention so basically um you go play a game of dodgeball, and, and based on who the winner is, or based on what happens, uh, next year's theme or next year's story can be completely different uh, if they don't uh, win. That's 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 kind of the game, and that's how we always been doing it, so that the congoers 
and everything that they do uh, will actually affect um, the storyline and the plot. So they can they can have things changed out next year. Um, this year, this year the theme of fantasy won, so we've got a little fantasy story for you guys. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I will say, um, anime dodgeball sounds terrifying. <laughs> I, I just imagine some burly guy dressed as like JoJo or Armstrong or something just. No, no, you, you have no idea about our dodgeball tournament. Oh my gosh, we have we have some casual dodgeball goers, and and we're very nice with them, and they're 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 very fun. And uh, the person running my tournaments takes it very seriously. And but we have a group, and we call them the the A team, and they're scary. We don't let them on the same team ever, and we know who they are a mile away. And these guys can play some serious serious dodgeball. Uh, <laughs> They absolutely are terrifying, um, like doing flips and stuff while they throw things and just like slamming it into each other. And it was like nobody could play against them. <laughs> and yeah, they are generally like fight cosplayers and stuff like that. <laughs> They're shouting attack moves before they throw the ball. <laughs> they are they are actually horrifying. <laughs> like, like, I think the uh, um, the convention center was a little worried after seeing them go, but afterwards they were like, oh, okay, well they're fine. <laughs> Well, now, obviously, you know, I think it was it was either last year or the year before you guys switched to a convention center. Um, how has that been working out for you? Uh, first year was very expensive. <laughs> Sounds about right. <laughs> uh, but, uh, you know, with, with success and with people figuring out what we're doing, we're getting more and more wiggle room. Um, things are getting cheaper for us. Things are getting um, easier for us. Uh, with the convention center, they're trying to uh, actually give us um, what we need. Um, as opposed to trying to charge us for every little thing. So, I mean, that that's just how it goes. You develop a relationship with the convention center, and it gets cheaper, gets better, um, comes together. So that's always that's always really nice. That's what's happening. Um, uh, the It's not, not as cheap as what it was back when it was in the university, but at, at the same time at the university, I was also able to do this for free. <laughs> so... Well, you know, not a lot of people have that platform when starting a convention. I think that really benefited Comic Con. Oh yeah, oh yeah, that was a that was a lot of work, a lot of budgeting, a lot of my own money. I just really wanted to um, give back to the anime community. I, I've said this in the in the past interviews, but but you know, it's nice to say it again that I I guess I went through some hard times, and I thought um, anime really uh, manga generally, but anime the anime community as a whole generally helped me out a whole bunch uh, during that, and uh, I've always been trying to give back. So Comic-Con was my way for doing it, and it still is. I love bringing new things um, that the anime fans in this area aren't normally used to seeing. Um, so I'm always out on the lookout for to find something new, something something that's not usually in the southeastern part of the United States that I can bring to everyone. Well, the, the benefit, too, I think, of starting at a university, and I actually complained uh, to a fellow staff member about this, is I see so many conventions kind of crop up, and they spend all this money, and they get some really good guests, and then they don't do any hard marketing. And I don't mean just like inter like um, just like just internet um, advertising or putting, for example, like, hey, we're on animecons.com or something along those lines, but like literally going to the area passing out flyers, going to university clubs for anime or Japanese culture, you mm -hmm. know, just literally hitting the streets, if you will. And so I think that's the benefit of, of being a university con initially. Yeah, uh, I agree. I actually started up a new year university con over in uh, Mississippi because they just didn't have an anime con at the time. Um, but I, I do worry about like some of the small conventions that do pop up out of nowhere. I get I get really scared because I think I remember talking to somebody who had a new convention. He said he like took out a big loan from a bank, and I was like, "Oh God, I hope everything goes well for you," because <laughs> it's not the most profitable business, especially not at the beginning. You know, you could you can make money with it maybe far later, you know, down the line, but absolutely terrifying that someone took out like a giant bank load to put a loan to put a convention together. Um, I saw one convention popping up that was bringing out decent guests that was only charging $5. It was a first-year convention. I was like, oh, my gosh. I'm so scared. <laughs> I'm scared for you. But that one turned out to be backed by a a, a well-known convention. So I was like, oh, okay. Okay, it's just a just a just like a, a branch of some other bigger con, so they actually have the money to back it up. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've commonly heard that it's it's fairly normal 
to lose money in the first year as long as you have a have more you know kind of like hey i'm gonna throw this event as long as you have kind of like a five-year plan if you will like you would with any business um or a two-year plan or, or whatever um and it seems like a lot of people are just like i'm gonna do this one year and then i'll go from there <laughs> Um, I mean, yeah, it's it's fantastic to have a multi-year plan. Um, but I always I always tell everybody, like everybody always gets uh, my staff freaks out a little bit because uh, they're like, how are you going to top it? Because um, every year I try to make the very best year I possibly can make. Like that is that is the goal. Is that there's there's some there's some uh, truth in that uh, style as well. I think I think you should always make the best year you can make. Uh, bring as much as much to the people as possible. Uh, this year, um, as far as what I'm bringing to the Southeast that's not um, known in the Southeast or that's not been in the Southeast before, uh, I was able to get Team Four Star um, down here. I've never never met these gentlemen before. They they seem very nice. Um, but yeah, they, they haven't really been in the Southeast. I think they've hit a Florida con once. Um, but other than that, it's it's good to have a uh, have, uh, Team Four Star because they're so, they're so big in the anime community right now doing the Dragon Ball Z abridged and the Helsing abridged and all, all that successful online internet stuff. <laughs> exactly, Mundo. And before we talk about more of your fabulous guests, I want to take a short break here on 91.8 The Fan, but don't go anywhere because our special guest isn't. I've tied him to a chair. I promise. <laughs> I'm trapped. Someone help. <laughs> don't send help. He'll be fine. <laughs> Hey everybody out there, you're tuned in to 91.8 The Fan. My special guest obviously is still here. Um, Help! Just... <laughs> I'm still tied to my chair. Oh, somebody will fix that eventually, don't worry. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, if you weren't here, how were you going to promote the other guests that are coming to your convention? Oh, that's right. I got to promote these guests. I got I to gotta shamelessly plug everything. Because that's technically what I'm here for, not to just ramble on forever. <laughs> half and half. Half and half. 80, okay. 20, 70, 30. We'll see. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So, so we, we have, we have, uh, we've got some great voice actors guests. I brought, I brought this gentleman, uh, Bryce Pappenbrook to one of my conventions before already, but now he's going to my big in convention, Comic Con. So I love Bryce Pappenbrook. We call him the Tsunami Tsunami. <laughs> uh, it's what Aaron from Attack on Titan, Ren from Blue Exorcist and Kirito from Sword Art Online. I'm just like that. That is a lot of Toonami right there. <laughs> it's all a big popular anime. So I, I, I call him the new, the new golden boy of anime when I see him because I'm just like, he's all the main characters all over the Toonami. And uh, I love it. Yeah, he, he's a very nice guy. So is his wife. His wife's a really nice guy. Well, nice lady too. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell her you said that. <laughs> I, was like, I stopped that. I was like, his wife is a really nice guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a secret. We won't tell anybody. <laughs> well, well, who else? I'm I'm sure there's more. I know Comic Con. No, that's it. That's it. We got we got no more. Just just no. Okay, we got uh we're bringing Michael Salasad. Um, I, I absolutely adore this man. He is a very very nice guy. He is a fan that uh auditioned uh for Funimation and got in. He's living the dream that all the fans do. You know where they send in their tape and. Funimation gives them a call and ten, tells them to come on over, and they they go into Funimation and do a couple voices. And somebody says, "Hey, would you like to be Soul and Soul Eater?" And he's like, "Yes, yes, I would." <laughs> um, he he's he's really cool. Um, he's really fun. Uh, he has a lovely. Uh, uh, he's also Toma from uh, Index, uh, Ami from Wolf Children, and uh, he has a, a lovely girlfriend, Afia Yu. Um, she's also a voice actress uh, with Funimation, um, but. You know, from she's Mikuni from Shangri La, uh, Kanan from uh, Guilty Crown, but she also runs uh, Sake Visuals, which I thought was really cool. She she's a, she has a visual novel company uh, in America that she seems to work on very well. So she's always a fun guest for not just for voice acting, but for um, doing that kind of stuff because her visual novels are actually really nice. Um, I actually bought a few in the past just just to check them out, and they're fantastic. Uh, we have Christina V. Uh, we, I talked with Christina V a while back, and it was really nice to hear back from her. She seems to have done a few extra things since I last talked with her, but she's like Mio from K-On. Uh, she's Homura from, uh, oh my gosh, Monica. <laughs> That's something to blank on. Uh, no, she, she's Homura from Monica. <laughs> uh, Luis, um, 
from Zero Sakaima and Sailor Mars in the Viz Media Dumb, uh, as long as as well as uh, Nonaha. And those are those are a couple of our voice actor guests. We're bringing Nostalgia Critic. He's a fantastic guy, very funny online. Uh, we've had him once before, way in the past, and he, I adore him. He's the funniest person. Uh, we have his uh, other person, Sci-Fi Guy, always come in because he lives in Atlanta. So it's always nice to bring them together. Um, Karibo's coming back, obviously, a little Karibo. Uh, he comes every year. He's our, he's one of our favorite guests. He's really nice. Um, somebody uh, who I actually didn't know, which was which is rare, but I asked my staff, does anybody know this guy? And about, like, you know, a decent amount of hands went straight up. So I was like, oh, this guy's got some some popularity. Is Mr. Creepypasta on YouTube. That was announced pretty recently, if I if I recall correctly. Yeah, yeah, he he, he contacted us and said he, he wanted to uh, visit Birmingham. And I was like, yeah, I could do that. I could, I could have you visit Birmingham, which is where, you know, where our con's located. So so we just we just announced him, but I was like, does anyone know who Mr. Creepypasta is? And everyone's like, I do. And I was like, well, he's coming. <laughs> uh, we're bringing that sci-fi guy, as always, like I said, from Atlanta. Um, we have a, a different musical guest this year around. Um, we don't usually do bands. I thought I might try to venture in that a little bit. So we brought a Kazha, or Kazha, who's a rock band, um, hailing from Japan. And they they sounded really good. I saw their concert. I was really impressed with just how how energetic um, they were, not just in their show, but just outside their show. They were just really nice people to talk with. Yeah, um, I'll, I'll say from experience that they're they're fantastic to listen to to perform. And um, I got a chance to meet with the main singer at a convention um, a few years back, and she was adorable and sweet. And so, um, if anyone has not heard of this group, please check them out because I know a lot of listeners obviously love music. Yes, and she she's fantastic. Her music was great. Like like I I said, I would go check out her show, right? Um, because, because you know, I'm mean, looking around for guests and things like that when I'm at other conventions, and uh, I walk in. Now, usually, I'd walk in, I'd listen for a few seconds. My wife would be like, "All right," and we'd leave, right? Uh, you know, something around there, or other people. And we brought other people that weren't, you know, like uh, running conventions either. They just wanted to, you know, come follow us around. So we walked in there, and uh, I'm I'm not the hugest like music expert, but when I look around, I see somebody come in and just stop. And then nobody suggests leaving. They just all just stand there. And some people go and sit down and some people want to get closer. And my wife was trying to listen to them from all different angles um, uh, to hear to hear how the audio is working. And, and she, she, she listened. She listened for a while. Um, I have not seen my wife do that. <laughs> um, but uh, the, the people that were following us also stayed and listened for quite a while. And it's, uh, I, I've done this for a long time. I haven't seen people just, you know, stop and just enjoy the music as long as, as long as uh, these people do. I, I like to, I like to study crowds and how they, how they move. And uh, Kazuha, Kazuha, I call him Kazuha. I don't know why. <laughs> Cause that's, I don't think that is how that's pronounced. It's like Kazuha, <laughs> K-Z-H-A. And, um, but they, they really stopped people who went in there to listen. Like, I see people go in there, you know, listen to a band and then walk away. I, I see uh, crowds do this all the time, and they stayed. And that, that really hit me pretty hard. So I was like, you know what? I, I, will let you, I, I want you to be my musical guest. Come on over. And that was really nice. And we're bringing the, the Hatsune, uh, well, the Vocaloid concert um, back again with Hatsune Miku and, and uh, SRP Productions. They, they were there last year. It was a fun show. People seemed to enjoy it. So bringing it back. Uh, oh, and here's a, here's a nice one. Um, we're bringing an industry guest of Vertic uh, Ed Chavez from Vertical Comics. Um, we're Ooh, gonna, that'll be fun. We're going to manga publisher. I've never brought a manga publisher style guest to our convention before. Um, but yeah, Vertical Inc. does things like uh, Cheese Sweet Home, The Adorable Cat, uh, GTO, Summer Wars novels, things like that. Attack on Titan novels. They 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 generally bring uh, Senin type manga over into the United States. And uh, Ed Chavez is one of their directors, and he'll he'll be here, you know, doing some panels. So if you want to learn a little bit more about Japanese culture and the business side between the two, that's always a lot of fun. I'm I'm very uh into the whole business side of everything. And another new type of guest, we've never actually brought a cosplay guest to Comic-Con before. Uh, we love we love cosplayers. Um, we love having them. But 
Uh, we never actually had an official cosplay guest, but this time we brought uh, Rufflebutt cosplay, um, uh, previously known as Anime Angel. Uh, her name's Jessie, and she does tons of tutorial. My wife calls her the tutorial queen. So a lot of cosplayers like to use her tutorials online to, you know, figure out how to make their cosplays. And so I thought she would be a fantastic uh, first cosplay guest to bring to my convention. And so we brought her along, and she'll be here. And very excited to have her. We'll be treating her really well, uh, along with uh, the the usual suspects of you know comedians, Aaron Aaron Pabone, Laugh Out Loud Improv Comedy Groups, and Greg Wicker with his uh, game shows. But those those are those are our groups. Those are those are a lot of our guests. And I absolutely adore them, along with the World Cosplay Summit giving a qualifier um, at our convention as well. Well, it seems like you guys have a big group of people coming this year, so you're growing. And I like that you're, you guys are also expanding to a different variety, if you will. Yes. Uh, last year I brought um, a big group. Uh, was it the uh, Cowboy Bebop reunion, which is the first time they did that, along with the Sailor Moon uh, reunion last year, which they're, they're touring. They're, they're fantastic people, uh, the, the, the Sailor Moon group. If you're a convention out there, the Sailor Moon group is hilarious and fun and super nice. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I, I, that took a long time. I think it took me like three years to put those together. So I can't, I can't just bring out like, all right, so time for the big, you know, blank, blank reunion right away. Because <laughs> that took three years, so. But I'm having having a good time, bringing a whole lot of fun guests. So, and I got married last year. So at the convention, that was a little different. Yay! No, it was it was really nice to you know hear about the proposal and then ask you about the you know the wedding event at the convention. So <laughs> you know, it, do you have your anniversary now every convention? Is that how it's going to work? Oh no 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 the the, the convention uh, the convention date that time was uh, Valentine's Day because that it was our anniversary. And so it was gonna stay our anniversary. So I had actually booked uh, in advance the, that, that date for our convention, but now our convention's at the end of February, um, uh, into March 1st. So we don't, we don't have to have our anniversary at the convention every year. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, that's some good flexibility. You know, I mean, sometimes you might want to just for, just for the heck of it, but <laughs> I can see how you'd want privacy too. <laughs> Uh, nah, it was it was a busy, busy, busy day for a wedding. Some people were just like, "Oh, did you did you guys treat the convention like your honeymoon?" I was like, "We we we were very busy. <laughs> we were working. <laughs> we were working very very hard. <laughs> we didn't get to see each other very much, <laughs> but um, it was worth it. the The fans seemed to like it, and uh, we took our honeymoon in Japan. It was a lovely country, and I got to got to meet a lot of important. Uh, um, anime related people there because uh, we were our honeymoon in Japan happened to fall upon the same time as Project Anime. Um, so we were right there at the same time as Anime Expo and all the other giant conventions uh, wandering around Japan and got to meet people like like the people from Studio Trigger, uh, Aniplex, and all that stuff. So lovely, lovely people. Everyone's so nice. Fantastic. Nice social uh, situation. Everyone's polite. That is, that is the that is the term I was looking for. <laughs> well, and everything is so clean too. <laughs> oh yes, for 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 a country like for a city, sorry, for a city because I didn't venture out to the country too much. Tokyo as, is a city for no with no trash cans. They are ridiculously clean. It's magic. They're... It's magic little gremlins in the middle of the night. Um, oh well, this is Japan. It'd be little robots, but <laughs> <laughs> <They're> tiny little Roombas. <laughs> <laughs> Just you know, after midnight, it's like an army of Roombas. Okay. Um, <laughs> you doing you doing stormtrooper Roombas? Yes. <laughs> okay. With little helmets on top of them, it'd be adorable. I mean, I was just at CES, and every every year that I go to the Consumer Electronics Show, it it just feels like half of the 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 rooms are Roombas, which is ridiculous. I don't I don't <laughs> actually know why there are so many Roombas on display. Because, because as as a species, uh, human beings, we don't want to clean up after ourselves. So that is that is the most important place for technology to go before anything else. To go on a really funny tangent, I think the most extreme one I found was one for just cleaning solar panels. <laughs> In case you need one. <laughs> 
But for the fans out there that want to register for the convention, where can they do that? Um, yes, uh, you can register for the convention uh, at uh, comicon.net. That's K A M I C O N.net, one word. Um, and there'll be a uh, registration button, and you can just uh, pre register online there. It's $35 for all three days. Uh, and uh, walk, walk in is going to be 45 if you want to do a walk in. We do this so you, you know, you can pre register so we can have, you know, money beforehand, have a good guess at what, how many people are coming, things like that. So feel free to uh, uh, pre register before pre registration closes. Our con's on February 27th through March 1st at BJCC, Birmingham, Alabama. And we're going to have uh, a fun time with you guys. That's, that's the most important thing is the con goers. Fantastic. And for the fans that want to keep up to date, I know you guys do social media, so where can they find you? Oh, our social media stuff, huh? <laughs> we, <laughs> you look Comic Con, uh, look up Comic Con online. Uh, we have we have a uh, look at the Facebook Comic Con stuff. Uh, we do have a we do have a group for Comic Con. Again, that's a K M I C O N, um, but with a dash between. And then we have a, we actually have Shio Comic Con. And Kosho Comic Con, those are our two mascot girls. That's Salt, Salt and Pepper, in Japanese, uh, and they, and and they just yell at each other all the time, basically, <laughs> because they actually have um, pages. Because this is we we made this way before uh, Facebook went crazy with the whole like you have to have a like page and not a, um, not an actual like profile page, but we made Shio and Kosho as actual profile pages. Um, so they're like normal human beings yelling at each other until Facebook deems that they should go away. <laughs> <laughs> they, they've stuck around for, since the beginning of the con. So when Facebook all changed all its rules, we were just like, well, I mean, they're still there. <laughs> we have not been purged. So <laughs> can't fight Facebook. Yeah. They, so, you know, Shio, Shio and Kosho are con girls. They, they just, you know, yell at each other all the time. I mean, Twitter's a little bit safer for yelling at people. That's what I do to most of my <laughs> staff. Like, they're not a, they're not here at their shift, and then I immediately, and they post, like, a status, and then I at them, like, where are you? Where? So that's what I use Twitter for. So. Ah, people, pe you young people and your tweets and your Instagrams. I'm on I, 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 I don't know Instagram. <laughs> I don't know how to Instagram, if you want me to be really honest. I don't think I can upload to Instagram. I can upload to Twitter, though. I, I do feel like an old person sometimes. I, I went on a... Every, everyone was into Tumblr for a while. I know how to do tumble, Tumblr now. I know how to tumble now. Um, but back back when it was like becoming a big deal, I was like, oh, yeah, everyone's getting to this Tumblr thing. I like signed on. I was like, I have no idea how to tumble. <laughs> <laughs> how does this website work? I was, I, I was into Tumblr pretty early. I think Tumblr, because I didn't have to deal with any of, like, people are poking me and sending me game invites. It was just pretty pictures. I like this picture. I'm going to reblog this picture. Yeah, my wife my wife likes Tumblr. I like Tumblr. It's a nice thing. But I was just, I, when I first signed on, I was like, how do you young people do the thing? Uh, <laughs> with the magic and the stuff and the practice and the thing. You young people and your, your, your PlayStation 2s and your printing presses. I do have a PlayStation too. Well, I have I have two actually. I have a European one and a US one, but <laughs> I got I got all the pretties. I like all the pretties. Um, oh yeah, that that that's gonna be at the uh, at the con. Was it Fighting Climax, the one with all the anime characters fighting each other and J All Stars? Yeah, that's in our video game room. You guys want to check that out? <laughs> you could fight. You could have Shakugan no Shana Shana fight Kirito fight. Um, you know all sorts of random people throughout the game. It's going to be fun. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. And is there anything else you want to promote for the people who haven't heard of Comic-Con and are now a little bit more well-informed? Uh, anything anything about Comic-Con? Uh, we have fun. Um, we're active. Uh, we love... We And the mo of course, uh, what I say every, every time, and I'll say it again and again and again, all my opening ceremonies, all my interviews, um, the most important thing at a convention... Um, if you are coming to my convention, uh, it's you. And I don't mean like, you know, that in the cheesy, uh, you know, aha, you are what matters. I mean, quite, quite literally, uh, I, I do like to look out into crowds and see how the crowd is feeling, how the crowd is, is moving and uh, what's going on. And yes, the con has some effect on that. The con staff definitely have an effect on that. Um, what people bring to a con, but be, to be perfectly honest, you can have a con with no guests. And, have, and it'd be the best con you've ever been to. 
Um, and it's because of the people around you. If people are treating you well, if people are treating you with kindness, um, if people are having fun with you and not just, you know, um, being petty or being angry or being mean or rude, if everyone's just being nice with each other, being nice to the neighbor, you, you can be the difference between somebody having a horrible con experience or the best con experience they've ever had. And, and that's not something um, uh, the con itself can control. It is um, definitely what the con goers can control. And um, I honestly think that the best thing about Comic Con is the con are the con goers. The con goers are fantastic people. They are so polite. Um, I, I joked around with the uh, um, the Sailor Moon cast last year. They're from Canada. And, it's, and it basically, we joked around saying that it's Canadian hospitality versus uh, Southern hospitality. <laughs> <laughs> and we're gonna we're gonna duke it out, and it's gonna be a whole uh, mess of like holding doors open for each other and trying to you know get you know pay for everybody else's meal and. Be <laughs> I'm not your buddy pal. I'm not your pal. <laughs> <laughs> they you know they were super nice, and we're, and I think um, our congoers are probably some of the nicest congoers around, and I think that is probably the most important part of a convention uh, more than anything else. So, congoers who are listening. Um, even if it's not my convention, know that that you you are what stands between somebody having a, a normal con experience, a bad con experience, or a fantastic con experience, just just based on your behavior. Well, I think that is an amazing way to end the interview. Thank you so much for coming on for a third, fourth, been possibly a fifth time in the future <laughs> to talk about the convention because I, we we love to hear about it every year. Oh, thank you very much. I love being on. And for anybody out there that missed any of this interview, don't fret. You can find it on the website within the next few days. So keep your eyes peeled to 918thefan.com and your ears tuned to 91.8 The Fan, where we play everything you want and nothing you don't. <laughs>